Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Follow me in 2023 and I will show you how to start transplants indoors for vegetables, flowers, and herbs. We grow them inside six weeks to 12 weeks, get them to size, and then we get them out into the garden. And I will also show you how to plant, tend, and grow an entire vegetable garden. This is my grow light setup. You don't need anything this elaborate. You just need one shelf, two four foot LED lights. I will put information in the video description about lights, seed starting mix, stuff I've already covered. So let's get started with starting tomatoes indoors, starting peppers indoors, and I'll show you how to easily do it. Let's go over some of the basic supplies that you're going to need. These are seed starting cells and flats. I sell these at my seed shop. You find these in stores. You can use foil baking trays. You can use yogurt cups with holes in it. You can use other things if you want to repurpose. But I like using the starting cells. Now there's a couple things that are important. You need a flat. This is a standard flat. There's no holes in the bottom. And then these different kinds of containers sit inside just like that. And then we're going to bottom water. I'll show you what bottom watering means. That's just the way to keep the plants hydrated without dumping water onto the top of the soil. You're also going to need a seed starting mix. I make my own. I will link videos in the video description to talk more about the seed starting mix. So the question I always get is, do I have to start any smaller standard cells? And when you put these in here, you're able to start 72 plants when you're using something like this. As you get to the bigger cells that are deeper and larger, you can't start as many plants. However, it can be a pain to transplant, to start your tomatoes and peppers in here and then transplant up into a larger container or into something like this. It really depends on how many plants you're growing. If you have enough grow light space and you're not growing a lot of plants, you can just start in these two and a half inch pots and then you don't have to up pot your plants. Because they have more root, more room for the roots in there, that tomato transplant, that pepper transplant can stay in there for a good six, eight, 10, 12 weeks. When you start in something small like this, as soon as you see the roots starting to coil in the bottom, and I'll show you an example of that, of the cell, you can just pop it out. You really have to transplant those plants into bigger pots. It's called up potting. It's just a little bit easier to start in the larger containers, then you don't have to up pot. But if you're starting a whole lot of plants like I do, I tend to start them in something about this size and then I do up pot them once, but we'll talk about that. So those are the basic cells and a basic flat. Again, you can substitute a foil baking tray. You can use any kind of um, plastic container you wanna repurpose. Just make sure you put holes in it. Today is November 11th. The plants in here have been growing, these really from October 24th or so, so they've been growing what? About 20 days, 21 days. I want to talk about timing of when you start your plants indoors, because that's really important. Like I was saying, if you start in something larger like this, you don't have to worry as much about timing. You don't want your plants to stay in small containers for for, uh, too long you can actually see the root system coming out of here. If they stay in these smaller cells and you're getting into your 6th, 8th, 10th week, they become root bound. The plants may look nice and green but they're kind of small and they're starting to kind of become like little bonsai plants. So timing is really important. We will get to seeding at the end of the video. If you want to just see that you can jump to the end. But these are the things that I think that are more important. It's really easy to put a seed in here and get everything growing. Tomato plants Pepper plants cannot take a frost. If you put them outside, a frost comes, it's going to kill them off. So you're timing tomato plants to be growing indoors from when they break, when they germinate. So it's six to eight weeks after they germinate. They're indoors, then you want to get them out into the ground. Peppers, it's really about eight weeks from when they germinate to 12 weeks, maybe a little bit longer for your super hot peppers. They tend to glow, grow more slowly. These plants want to go out into the ground when there's no frost risk left and when the soil temperature is really staying at about 50 degrees. The warmth is really starting to roll in. So the nights are staying in the 50s, the days are getting into the 70s, that warm period is coming in. If you push these out too soon, they may not get damaged from the frost, but they're going to turn purple. They're all going to just sit there and they're not going to do a whole lot. How do you know when your soil is about 50 degrees? You're really looking for the night temperatures to start rising and you're looking for you know, days when it's in the 60s and 70s and you're getting rain, that top two, four, six, eight inches of the soil is starting to warm up. Each zone is going to be a little different. So again, tomatoes, you want them growing indoors 
in the right size container for six to eight weeks after germination and then you want them to be going outside. Peppers, they can be grown inside for eight to 12 weeks after germination and then you want to get them outside. So that's the timing. It's going to vary for everybody. If you have ongoing you know, milder climates, you don't have to worry so much about that. But I'm in Maryland, January comes, well, November, December, January, and February come. It's just too cold. Even March is too cold to get the plants out. So these are going in late April if I push it, but realistically sometime in the beginning of May. All right, so let's talk about how many seeds to put into a cell. This is the smaller cell, and then you have, you know, the basic 72. It just looks just like that. You can start in either of these if you plan to pot them up. You get a little bit more time of keeping them in here. These are actually um, 18 days old, so not quite three weeks. I recommend you put in two, well, let's turn it this way, two or three seeds per starting cell. There's four starting cells in there. And then when they get to this size, after about two weeks of growth from germination, they're going to take, by the way, five to seven days for the seeds to germinate and for the plants to come up. So when they get to about this size, and we're going to talk about watering and fertilizing too because these are getting a light feed, you're going to just basically look for the strongest plant, that's the strongest plant, and then you're going to snip off the weakest one. And this one I would do, sometimes you know you're going to drop more seeds, and that's okay but you really want to thin them down to one plant. You don't want to be growing two tomato plants in each cell. So let's finish that off. And let's take that one off. So these are now set up to continue growing for the next six weeks or so. Maybe I'll pot them up, but you get the idea. Now, it is possible to pop the whole plant out Let's find a good example. Well, let's use this one. This one is actually four weeks old. You could pop the plant out. You're going to see, now there's three plants in here. Instead of clipping them and removing them, which is fine, you can do that. You can just gently tap the soil, break the root balls apart. Now, I have this over planted. There's too many plants in here, but if you have two or three seeds, you can then gently break them apart like that. That's pretty good for having really tangled plants in there. And you can see the root systems, that one's too small. And then if I was going to up pot it, I would just put a circle right in there, drop in the tomato plant, fill around it, and then this would not go under the grow lights because I just did this to it. They get a little bit of shock. This will just sit somewhere for a couple of days out of the light. It'll get watered in in the beginning and just give this plant a couple of days to kind of strengthen up. It'll be good to go. So these have been potted up. This was showing you how to separate the roots out of the root ball. Now, when you're seed starting, you want two or three tomato seeds per starting cell two or three pepper seeds. The reason you do that is you don't want to be waiting around for one seed that's not going to germinate to germinate. So you start two, maybe three. If you have to, you thin them down just like I showed you, either cutting them or kind of gently pulling the root, roots apart and putting them into other plant, in, into other pots. Now, a lot of people don't like feeling like they're killing off tomato plants or pepper plants. I certainly feel the same way after doing this for 15 years. But you just want to make sure, however you do it, that you're only growing one plant per cell. You just don't want these plants to compete against each other. So let me show you how you would pot these up. These guys are still a little bit young. Let's pretend this is endive, but let's pretend that this is a tomato plant. And it's in the smallest six-pack cells, and you can see the roots coming out. After your tomatoes and peppers germinate, somewhere between two to four weeks, depending on the size of the cell you're using, you may have to transplant that tomato plant or pepper plant. And you just simply pop it out again, pretend this is a tomato plant, and you can see how the root system is all coiled around here. That is a plant that's going to start to become root bound. And it'll look nice up top, but it's going to stop growing, the roots get bound. You basically just want to loosen this up a little bit, gently scrape it, 
And you do this really for most of your vegetable transplants. But again, pretend this is a tomato plant or a pepper plant. I would put it into this two and a half inch container. I just fill it with the soil. We'll go over planting towards the end and just drop the transplant in just like that. Press it in. And this is how you pot up your tomato plants as they get larger into larger containers if you're not already starting in, you know, something like this. So that pretty much, you know, was focused on tomato plants. Tomato plants, again, they are indoors six to eight weeks before they go out into your garden after frost has passed. And the way that you figure out when is frost not an issue in my area is you have to check out historic weather records or just search like, for me, I would do Maryland, um, Columbia, last frost date, and you're going to find that on the internet. These are pepper plants. These are in larger containers. Now, the cool thing about pepper plants is that over the years, I've discovered that you could really let two plants grow in something like this size or this size, because when I go and plant my peppers outdoors, I plant two into a planting hole, and it doubles my production. But for the sake of this video, we're going to trim this down to just one plant. I'll be doing something with these in future videos. Please subscribe. I cover just about everything you can think about with respect to vegetable gardening. So I am cutting these back to just one plant per cell. And these are going to be able to sit in there easily 10 weeks or longer. We'll get to fertilizing and watering shortly. But this is the care. And it's when the plants are about this size. These are kind of smaller peppers. Let me show you a couple that are past their prime a little bit. And that's all I'm really doing is thinning, thinning, yeah, thinning it down to one plant. Now, I also have multiple seeds. This is way too many pepper plants in here. I have multiple seeds in here because I test germinate all the seeds that we sell at our seed shop. So that's a lot in there. These also now have... Let's see if I can isolate one. Here we go. These have, so the first leaves that come out when plants germinate are just two basic leaves. And then after they're growing for a while, they're going to start putting out their true leaves. This is a pretty big pepper plant. This is just starting to get its true leaves right here. And that's kind of what you're looking for. As these true leaves, everybody asks me, when do you start fertilizing? Well, generally speaking, after they germinate, somewhere between 7 and 14 days. But I also start looking for these leaves. And once I start seeing them on the tomato pepper plants, that tells me it's time to feed them. When a plant first germinates, it lives off of its seed coat, establishes, grows, and it, it kind of gets started. But you know, seven days, 14 days later, it's going to be looking for fertilizer in the soil. In my soil, I put in worm castings. I have videos on that. But I'm going to just talk to you about how do you use a water-soluble fertilizer to feed these plants ongoing as they're developing as transplants. So there's way too many plants in here. So you would take it out. You can see the root systems. Let's just see for fun if I can do it. I mean, I don't like wasting plants, but I have to do a test germination, so I know these seeds germinate when I sell them. So you just gently pull things apart. I do this when the root ball, the soil is not soaking wet. You want to wait a couple of days after watering. You don't want this to be dead dry, but just a little bit damp. And you can pull all these plants apart and I could, in theory, then plant these up. I'm going to be doing a separate video on this. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten plants in there. And the root systems look pretty good. You just would drop them, you know, you make a hole, just FYI, deep enough so that when you drop the roots in, they're spread out and then you kind of fill around them, like I did with the tomato plant. But I just wanted to give you a little more info on that. All right, let me actually move these, cover them with soil. You, when you're doing this too, you want to quickly get these into the containers. The roots start drying right away, so the soil around here will keep them moist until I pot them up after the video.
the tomatoes and the pepper plants have been thinned out or they've been potted up or we've used the endive to show you an example of what we would do with the tomato or pepper plant. So they're going to be able to sit in these containers really until they're ready to go out into the ground. The question I get a lot is how many tomato plants do I need uh, for a family of four or a family of two or how many pepper plants? It really depends on what you like to eat, how much you're going to be eating out of the garden. Generally speaking for a family of four, I think you want at least six tomato plants. I really like them maybe 10 or 12 pepper plants. This is a great way to grow. If you're just getting started growing stuff indoors, these are the larger cells that I sell at my seed shop. And you could just label them. These are Tiny Tim's. These are dwarf tomatoes. I'll be doing a series on growing these indoors if you want to follow me. These are Homestead variety. This is just a standard slicing tomato. And this is a cherry tomato. This is perfect. You could just start six plants like this. I wouldn't do dwarf plants, but let's just pretend these are, you know, regular size, some other tomato plant, maybe Cherokee purple. So you have two tomato plants, four tomato plants, six tomato plants. You can start these indoors just like this. Let them get to that six week mark, eight week mark maybe. Get them outside when the frost is gone. Now, the reason I recommend starting indoors is because it saves you so much money. It's a fun activity. It gives you something to do. But instead of paying three, four, five dollars at transplant at four, you know, I, I've seen them really for four ninety nine now at the big box stores, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty dollars in transplants from a store is just ridiculous. Even twenty four dollars is too much. You can do this for pennies a plant. You can reuse the plastic. You can continually use these over the years. When you set up the grow light system, it only costs about eight bucks a year for one of those four foot lights to operate. So it's not really expensive. All right, so let's get to seeding and then I will talk to you about how long the lights stay on, um, watering, feeding, some other things too with the plants. But let's get to planting the tomato and pepper seeds. Let's set up the cells now with your starting mix. We'll put in the seeds. We have pepper seeds, we have tomato seeds. Again, this is your basic cell. When you are, and check out the video description for videos on this, I've done tons of them, your seed starting mix should have some moisture in it, so it should be pre-moistened. When you buy seed starting mix in bags from stores, it's very, there's a very good chance that they're going to have fungus gnat eggs in there. So when you hydrate your seed starting mix, I recommend using boiling water. There is no soil life in here. You don't need that for seed starting. Once they get outside, you need great soil biology, you want compost out there, you want all the good stuff. For seed starting, sterile mix. So use boiling water, that will kill off the fungus gnat eggs and you can get to planting. If you want, you can add in some worm castings or something like that. But I just really fertilize with a water soluble fertilizer. To set up your cells, you want to fill them with the seed starting mix, obviously. But this is a little trick that I think is important. You don't want it to be too loose, so press it down just kind of lightly pack it in with your fingers, cover it over again, and then a little bit more soil and press it in. You just want a nice, solid seed starting base for your plants. We're going to always bottom water. These will sit in the flat that I showed you in the beginning. You fill water underneath and it absorbs the water this way. You don't want to be pouring water on top, splashing seeds out. Uh, possibly spreading diseases, fungus molds around. So you always want to bottom water. For tomato seeds and pepper seeds, it's pretty much the same. I'm going to put two seeds per space. You can spread them out if you want, but you know, you're going to cut them back just like I showed you when they get to size. Pepper seeds. We're using the smaller cells, so these will have to be transplanted up if you were doing it this way. And I grow sometimes, in the past I've grown, with the pepper seeds, you can actually, well let me drop one there and one there, because I might keep two, because I told you, you can grow two pepper plants in one space. So in my garden, I've grown, you know, 70, 75 tomato plants. And when I had limited grow light space, and even my big setup isn't a lot, I would grow in here first, trans, uh, up pot them to something else, transition them outside to a cold frame. That's a lot of work. So let me just show you this and we'll talk about the bigger cell. About a quarter inch deep, that's it. 
two tomato seeds, two pepper seeds. I like to use a pencil, press them in. If you go past a quarter of an inch, I've done experiments where I've pushed them all the way down to here, they still grow because the starting mix is so loose you don't have to worry about it. Once you press them in, you're just going to cover them, label them, peppers, banana peppers, I think this was the Florida Day tomato, and they just go into your seed flat. And you can grow, I mean, you can plant as many as you want. This is the bigger cell. You can keep your tomatoes and peppers in here pretty much the whole time. I just want to show you the planting for those. So, same thing. Be one, two, one, two, one. Here's a seed over here. Two. Let me grab these tomato seeds. You're only growing one tomato plant though. So you can drop in two seeds right in the middle, two seeds right in the middle. No different nothing different whatsoever you press them in real quick I mean it can go this fast you don't have to be exact fill them up you're done that's how quick and easy it is to plant tomato seeds pepper seeds into these cells for seed starts you could go right into here it would just be two seeds or one seed just like you did if you you know don't want to buy these you can be using yogurt cups make sure there's holes in the bottom you fill them up the same way. The key is you want this to be somewhat moist when you're starting to plant. You want to kind of pack it down a little bit and I really do recommend checking out my video on using boiling water to sterilize this mix. You absolutely 100% don't need microbiology in your seed starts. Would it help? Maybe a little bit, but not enough to worry about it. I would rather have a sterile mix and zero fungus gnats and then when I get these plants outdoors they're going to have all the thriving soil biology they need to really develop into healthy plants. I'm going to show you how to bottom water. We'll talk about watering frequency, how to fertilize these, fertilizing frequency, and then we'll go to the grow light station, talk about how you set these up under the lights. I want to just drop in a 30 second video I just did. It is a giveaway that Hoselink is doing. They're giving away $500 and $600 in prizes. It's really worth it. I am affiliated with them. I use Hoselink in my garden. It's a retractable hose. It's changed the way that I can garden. But if you're watching this in November 2023, I would, you know, enter this contest. It's a big giveaway and it's really worth, you know, checking them out. Hose link has really changed the way I water my garden. This is an 82 foot retractable hose. I've been using it for several years. It really makes the chore watering that much more easier because you can pull the hose out, take it to where you need to, give the hose a snap, it recoils right back into there. But today I want to announce they are doing a giveaway. Three lucky winners are going to win a $500 cash prize and $600 in merchandise. And it's going to include an 82 foot retractable hose just like I use in my garden. Check out the video description for details. Hose link makes a difference in your garden. Bottom watering is pretty simple. So right now you can see that the soil is dark. There's moisture in there. As it begins to dry, you can see it a little bit right here. If I drop this down, maybe you'll see the contrast, but it's starting to lighten up. Your seed cells always dry from the top down. So when this top is a really light brown and it looks dry, that's good. There's still gonna be moisture down here. But that's the first sign when the top starts to lighten that you need to water. This will also be lighter because there's not going to be a lot of water in here. Right now this is pretty heavy. I can tell you need to wait. So you water, let's just say these all need to be watered. You have a flat like this. You're either using a foil tray or you pick something up like the standard uh, seed starting flat. And you're just going to fill it about a quarter of the way. All these cells have holes on the bottom. It's going to absorb water from the bottom. It's that fast, that simple. Trying to water each one of these takes a lot of time. It's messy, can knock seeds around, um, can kill off your seedlings because they're too tiny and they can't take that wave of water hitting them. Let this sit just like this for about 20 minutes. The top should become all dark brown. That's how you know you gave them enough water. If after 20 minutes there's still water left in there, you should just have to dump that out. Um, with practice you figure out how much to put in there and it's really not an issue. That's the basic watering. So watering, how frequent? Well when the plants are smaller, maybe once a week, twice a week. When they're bigger, it could be two or three times a week. It's all going to depend on the size of the plants, how warm your grow area is, how hot the lights are, etc. But you just want to keep an eye on them. Always water them that way. After they germinate, somewhere between 7 and 14 days, 
when you go to water, instead of just giving them water, you're going to put in a water-soluble fertilizer. A water-soluble fertilizer might be fish emulsion or something organic. I can tell you, if you use fish emulsion indoors, it stinks. A lot of the organic fertilizers are made out of animal parts and <laughs> bits and pieces, and they don't smell great in the house. I use the chemical fertilizers. Chemical fertilizers are perfectly safe. They don't harm you or your plants. Outside, I use compost. I'm, you know, 95% organic gardening out there. Indoors, I just use the chemical types. The whole key is, is that when you're going to use any water-soluble fertilizer, it's going to tell you like one tablespoon per gallon of water. You do not want full strength. If you put full strength fertilizer in here, it's going to concentrate in the starting cells. It's going to be problematic. You want to dilute that down. So if it's a tablespoon per gallon, you really want to go down to almost a quarter of a teaspoon. You want to get the N, P, and K numbers well below a 555 N, P, and K. If you can reduce it enough to make sure that your mix is kind of like, you know, a 2-nitrogen, a 1-phosphorus, a 1-potassium, that's great. Those, those numbers represent N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. You don't want to over-concentrate those into your seed starting mix. So you really want to dilute that down, like I was saying, almost to a 1-1-1 N, P, and K. It can have a little bit more nitrogen. But just reduce the amount that you put into a gallon of water and that's how you can bring down the N, P, and K levels. A lot of times when you read the packaging, it's set up for a dosage for your outdoor garden. Sometimes it will talk about indoor gardens or indoor seed starting, but you really want to reduce that down. How often do you feed these? At about 10 days or so, 14 days, you give them a feeding and you want to do that about every week. When the plants are bigger, maybe a little more often. When they're smaller, maybe a little less often, but you'll get the idea. If your plants start looking a little bit yellow, give them an extra feeding. Because you're kind of going slow and low and steady, if a problem starts and they look a little bit yellow, just give them more fertilizer. If you overdose them, and this is what's crazy, they can also begin to look yellow or change color, and then people think, oh no, I don't have enough fertilizer. They add in more fertilizer, and it kills off their plants. So the whole key, slow and steady with a water-soluble fertilizer. So you do need grow lights. These are white LED grow lights. The shop lights cost about $25 in my area. You can use white LEDs. You can buy something that's more elaborate, more expensive. They work better. But for transplants, just transplants, the white LED LEDs work really well. And again, check out the video description. You want the lights to be on 14 hours and off 10 hours. That's just a good rule of thumb. When you are first starting, you want the lights to be about two to three inches times that by 2.5 and that will give you centimeters above the seed starting mix. You want the lights to be really close so when they germinate they are hit by intense light, the lights are on for 14 hours and the plants get nice and stocky. If your lights are too high and you only leave them on for like eight hours, they're going to get really leggy. They're going to stretch as if, as if they're trying to stretch to the sun. Over time, maybe two weeks after they germinate, they've been growing, you can begin to raise the lights. So I have different stations and my lights are at different heights. That makes it kind of easy. I'm growing greens down there. Just did a video on that and pea sprouts. One trick that you can do, because it really is a pain to keep raising and lowering the lights. Instead of raising and lowering the lights, take them to a good height and then you just put foil trays or books underneath and then you lay your flat right on here. That puts them closer to the light. As the plants grow, you remove this and you just slide the flat in there. And this way you're not messing around with having to raise and lower the lights. So you want the lights on 14 hours. You want them off for 10 hours. I recommend white LED shop lights. The values that you're looking for is 5,000 Kelvin or higher and 5,000 lumens or higher. I also do recommend using a power strip and a timer so that you can either just shut them off with one button. If they're on a timer, it's perfect because you will eventually, at least a couple of times, forget to turn them on or forget to turn them off. A timer is really, you know, a game changer, actually. This way you can go to work, you can even go on vacation, everything takes care of itself. All right, so that's the basics for starting tomato and pepper plants indoors. Please subscribe and follow me. I will be growing all kinds of different plants indoors for 2023. And you can check out my 1500 YouTube videos and find just about everything you need there. Each year I kind of start over 
and just reteach the same information because there's always new subscribers coming on. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and you can find all your seed starting supplies at the Rusted Garden.